hi guys um just by a show of hands how many of you all have already started something okay you already selling to people when you say started means you have customers and who are willing to pay has anybody paid you yet okay uh, other guys were in different stages you got a client okay cool okay and you've already signed your contracts with them and everything oh okay wow best of luck <laughs> i know very good all right good so good 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 to know that's that's actually very important to get i guess professor kusey was just telling us about all the wonderful things that are happening at iit bombay to support entrepreneurship uh, and uh, i graduated with a phd under professor rao in 2011 in audio signal processing uh and at that time we started uh, the venture when i was just graduating and we incubated in sign uh, side by side and we had none of the amazing support and the different things that are that are happening now we had none of that we just were put into sign sign obviously was helping us uh, in a brand new kind of uh, area and uh, we were just figuring things out as uh, we went along um actually i don't know if professor vidya wants to just talk about quickly how we started off uh, from the lab because we were research students under her in the digital audio processing lab and that's where kind of the ideas originated and uh, from there we moved over to science so maybe you can just share with them about the little bit about the lab and how it started yeah hi uh so i'll just try and give you a little uh, bit of understanding of what's it all about what our product was uh, and so on it's not terribly important uh, you know because once you get into a business there are just so many other overriding uh, you know general things which are applicable to everybody that come into the picture but just you know maybe out of your interest uh, about something that really happened and this was actually an example of research uh, that was kind of brewing in the lab for some years uh which got to a point where the you know phd and mtech students graduating uh, in a particular year you know could see the connection to a product uh, so the kind of thing we work on is something you are probably already a bit familiar with i think if you've used any voice uh, based uh, systems uh, you know to interact uh, with your phone or with a computer or anything where you speak and uh, you get a response uh so it's about using audio and to interact with a machine uh except the difference here is we are not using normal speech but we are doing this with music uh so with music there are a number of things you might want to do you might want to search for music or you might want to navigate through uh, you know uh, archives and find music of your choice and something that we are doing actually is about you know creating uh, uh you know uh, let's say videos or uh, you know products your own uh, a creations by mixing let's say your singing with available uh, background music and finally about music learning uh, that is how do you get uh, you know a virtual teacher uh, in place on a machine so it's all about extracting information from sound and processing it uh, in order to do something intelligent with it uh, so of course uh, from the name of the lab we do audio processing so that's an area of signal processing actually Uh, so all signals uh, i mean basically signal is a very general term applied to anything as i speak whatever's on the microphone being recorded or, or you know being captured is something we call a signal so signal processing is about manipulating signals or you know processing them to extract information let's say what is being said at what pitch uh, is the speaker speaking is it a male speaker or a female speaker or in the case of music what kind of music it is and so on so there's a lot of information in the sound signal which typically our ears and brain process but if you could have algorithms that do it uh you know on a machine then you know that's what so those are the kinds of things we were doing and then at some point it seemed like this is a very very applied area and right now of course uh, the biggest names in the voice processing domain are you know google and amazon and you you know know all about their products and so on so there was a group of people who were also interested who were interested in working in music because you know they had some background like vishu himself is a musician uh so we developed something that uh, rather accurately extracts parameters uh, of interest from music signal so for example if you're talking about singing it try and extract the pitch of the voice the volume and so on so everything that's considered important in order to make a judgment on the quality of the performance or the musicality of the voice uh, or whether the voice is singing faithfully a particular song 
So that is the kind of thing uh, you know we worked on. So the algorithms actually are the research itself about how do you find uh, you know algorithms which are very accurate. They uh, you know can be validated uh, you know by uh, human listeners by recreating and comparing uh, with references and so on. But to take it to a product, we had to find a nice application for it to be able to do all this. So like I said, the music learning or the creation of, you know, the basically user created content. So these were possible, uh, you know, applications. So the way it worked is we had students, so it's perfectly possible to do a PhD where you actually, you know, write papers in conferences and journals. There are a lot of audio conferences out there where even many practitioners attend and so on. And, uh, Eventually, of course, uh, when you have something new, you can either publish it in a paper or you could patent it. And patent is only worthwhile if you think you're going to commercialize it. Uh, because otherwise, it really doesn't make very much sense to go through all that trouble. Uh, so we went through IRCC uh, for the patenting. So IIT uh, is now very well geared for that. We have patent lawyers, uh, you know, and attorneys who will help you evaluate your patent. In any patenting, actually, prior art is very important. You have to really show that what you have done is bringing in something novel and something that has not been mentioned before over whatever is available. Uh, so that typically with the research training and background, you become very good at reading papers, reading patterns and trying, you know, being able to identify what are all those gaps that you think you are, you know, uh, trying to close or where you are coming up with an enhancement which has really, it's not obvious and not already mentioned and so on. So we went ahead and applied uh, for a patent which of course took many, many years to finally get granted as a US patent. We applied for an Indian patent and there's a very well laid out procedure. Now, and I think it's a nice exercise overall. It makes you aware of everything. There are a lot of big and small companies applying for patents, and you come to know a lot from their, uh, you know, from this whole process. Fine. The, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So you want to try to answer that? Yeah. You have to. Uh, you can apply for a US patent directly. You can apply for an Indian patent also. Uh, typically, the US uh, intellectual property market is more mature. Uh, value of a US patent and the US patent office assigning a patent is considered uh, more uh, of a well thought out and well, uh, you know, as a, it's been around for a long time. So uh, they've done that a lot. So a uh, US patent in general is looks better on your resume, uh, is more enforceable within the US if you're trying to do business within the US somewhere uh, in time. It could be a patent as well, it's a piece of paper, right? And what the idea is that if somebody tries to copy what you're doing, you can stop them. Uh, or somebody can get discouraged from trying to copy because you already have a patent. So that's the, that's the use of a patent, right? So it's basically an entry barrier for somebody else to enter the market you're already in. So it's in a way specific to have. Now in India, uh, you can copy free, uh, <laughs> right? It's, uh, it, it, we know how, how things work over here. And you have bad money, you have whatever, you have all the different uh, things. And there are copyrights and trademarks and all that, but the real practical value for a small company uh, to try to kind of enforce that ability of not letting other people in with an Indian patent is not, uh, there's no practical value. If you're a very big company, sure, you can go after the copycats and stop them from entering, but uh, smaller companies don't have that uh, uh, bandwidth or uh, ability. So the idea is, uh, from a fundraising standpoint, from an actual business standpoint, uh, if you're planning to do business in the US, it looks, it's better to file for a US uh, patent. Um, and when we started off, we didn't know all that. Uh, it just sounds cool, US patent, okay. Mm -hmm. The rule of reading said, okay, US patent is something nice to have. And then we said, uh, the cost is 10 times what the Indian patent is. So, uh, we said, who's paying? IT said, we are paying. So, okay. <laughs> so, uh, that's, uh, that's why we went for US patent. Of course, that is actually, somehow that actually helped us now. So, it, I mean, it, uh, hindsight was, I don't know what it was. But uh, at this moment, the fact that we have a US patent is allowing us to get US clients on board a little easy compared to what if we didn't have so yeah yeah so so those were some of the steps and actually as we were working we you know normally had these kind of demos uh, you know we had IIT has a lot of opportunities you know like uh, uh, the tech fair uh, tech fest uh, expo uh, and they organize exhibitions in other places. And I think because it's a music oriented product, we even had uh, something at Mood Indigo, you know, which uh, you know, generated a lot of interest and so on. So you would have people coming in asking us that, oh, we are building this, this, can we get your algorithm or your, uh, you know, code to do it? And we were very happy to, because that kind of relieves you 
of the responsibility of actually taking it to market. You know, somebody is coming and saying that we'll do everything, we'll take it. But all those conversations typically don't lead anywhere because it's very difficult to make a match. Uh, you know, and typically they hugely undervalue and maybe they're doing the right thing, I don't know. But at that point, you are thinking that, okay, you are the most important piece in what they're doing, but they are not at least showing that they are thinking that. So it, it becomes very difficult to deal with these kinds of people. And so we thought, OK, why not we try it ourselves, you know, just go. And then you start doing that. Then, of course, you have to have people dedicated, like our students, our PhD and masters, typically from our department or from IIT, typically get very good jobs when they graduate. Uh, so it required a conscious decision on the part of some of the students who are graduating that year to say, no, let's give this a shot and take it ourselves. So at that point, we had nothing but a piece of code. Uh, and some big dreams that, okay, you could do this and that, which all, uh, you know, turned out to be, you know, not uh, really very, very much tied to reality, but, you know, we had to work our way to make it happen. Uh, so it's a tough for uh, this thing, but on the other hand, it's also, that's the only way. Otherwise, I think a lot of labs in IIT, a lot of departments have a lot of thesis, wonderful work, uh, lying in closets, in libraries, lots of codes, which maybe people have forgotten how to run and use and so on, you know. So that's what uh, ends up happening. But to actually do the other thing, like take it out and make it usable, turn it into a product, or even to start with a prototype, that all calls for quite a lot of planning and, uh, uh, you know, sort of initiative and hard work. So anyway, at that point, there was these students who were ready to, you know, give it a shot. And then Sign had already, you know, was in existence at that time. Uh, and IRCC, which is uh, the R&D uh, department of IIT, already had an understanding with SIGN that if we have some intellectual property that has been patented at, I at IIT, uh, there is a way for that technology to be exploited via SIGN company uh, in a very straightforward way without too many contracts and so on. They give that technology to SIGN company for up to three years and if they show that they can successfully exploit it, then the company gets to keep it. So we took advantage of that and went on to sign. And uh, you know, I'll just let we should take over and tell you uh, about. Yeah. Correct. 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 So I'll just walk you guys through our journey from you know a lot of Professor Gosse has a list of a lot of things we wanted to cover in terms of uh, the different aspects of business creation, and uh, this is it's like in one slide we kind of captured all the different things you've done. It's a little crowded, but I can kind of walk you through different parts. A lot of it will cover a lot of aspects of uh, business creation to the point where we are, we are by no means an ideal business. Uh, we've had a very bumpy road, uh, but uh, I think to our credit, uh, we're still around. So, you know, that kind of calls for something and we've been growing. So, those two things actually are encouraging us to move forward uh, and not, you know, uh, give up too easily. Um, okay, so I finished my PhD in 2011. Um, in the PhD, are there any Doctoral students here, by any chance, I highly doubtful. We should actually make it compulsory for like 10% of the PhDs on campus to attend. <laughs> uh, okay, don't be shy, shy man. You're one in a million. Huh? <laughs> so, so, uh, so the idea is that uh, the PhD. I don't know, but I don't know if it's, the system has changed. But when I was graduating, we had a thing called the pre-synopsis, which you submit, and then you have four months when it gets reviewed by external examiners. And then you actually submit your final thesis after four months and do a formal defense and all that. And the institute actually had a fund for funding you for those four months separately. So uh, typically, PhD students don't write a extremely thorough pre-synopsis, uh, which can be just you know directly taken to thesis. They do another iteration at the thesis stage. Uh, we did a proper pre-synopsis, which was almost like a thesis, and then use the four months to interact with Sign to write a business plan. So Sign has a lovely template. They give you this thing, and they help. They handhold you also. It's not like they say that okay, here's a template, and then you know you write it and come back to me. Uh, but they have the different aspects of business which you can never even think about: market research, uh, uh, finances, you know, a lot of legal, a lot of stuff. They ask you to think through, which uh, and you have the time uh, in that four months to kind of just think it through and uh, do some you know research of your own and come up with a business plan, which then they send out for review. Uh, to industry experts, and if you are uh, selected, then you get incubated. If you are not, then you know find your own way. Um, so we use those four months to write a business plan. Uh, that business plan helped us get incubated. So and they, we had a place in sign uh, in 2011. So uh, we literally did the defense in the morning, and in the evening we walked into our new office in sign and said, uh, "Okay, now let's start building the venture." Uh, interestingly. Uh, the business plan, so it was a simple, simple enough business plan in terms of a sale. 
So that's around here. We were incubated in Sign in May 2011. The business plan was very simple. We built a system that tells you how well you sing and gives you a very correct rating on how well you sing. If anybody has used karaoke systems, you know that if you're singing, you get a 100 score because everybody wants to feel good. Typically, the systems are used in bars and restaurants. Everybody's drunk, so they all want to be told how well they're singing, not how badly they're singing. And our system does a very serious analysis of how well you're singing. Where can it be used? First thought was obvious thing, Indian Idol call audition. All right, so Indian Idol will conduct an audition. They will use our technology. At the moment, auditions are conducted. Uh, people are asked to send, send their entries in, or do you have places where you, centers where 10,000 people line up and do the audition. Here we said, okay, you know what, you can make the audition on mobile or something. People call up, they sing a song, they get a rating. They, you, are ch you charge them for the amount of time they're singing uh, because they're online and they're using the phone number. Uh, we get a cut of that money. Uh, and so we are going to make 10 crores in year one. Uh, so that was the business plan. Very simple uh, kind of thought. And uh, IIT probably, uh, Simon was probably laughing. But uh, they said, Chalo, you know, let's see. Yes, why not? Give them a shot. So they were nice enough to give us an office and uh, say, try it out. Uh, and then we, along, so then, then we went to a music, well, we went to Indian Idol. Uh, at that time, we tried to kind of uh, make it happen. It took a long time to get, in fact, it took years to get to the right kind of people to see if that sort of a thing is possible. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So I'll tell you uh, what we thought at that time. It was there was a well, there was a conscious effort. It wasn't a thorough effort. It was a, a, a conscious effort in the sense that I knew some technology because I'd done the PhD and I understood how the tech worked and could build out more. There was a thought at that time. There has to be a front-facing. I was I'm not a CS guy. I'm not a computer science guy. There has to be a front-facing computer science interface and somebody can build out a program that will actually do this or a mobile application which will actually you know be the front face of a of a, of a product. Uh, so one of the master students in the same lab who also had an audio background but was a computer science uh, person. He kind of teamed up. Uh, Professor Preetira was a founder because we needed somebody to guide us technically and otherwise overall. And that was their founding team. Uh, there was nothing more thought at that time. Um, we did very soon realize the lack of a business person. And they say, and any, any startup blog you'll read, they say you must have a complementary skill in the co-founder uh, who can you know, sell uh, and while you all build and stuff like that. And it's absolutely true. Uh, we didn't have the good fortune of finding a business person that easily. Um, we didn't even know where we were operating actually, in which market exactly, because we didn't have a, a, a client at that time. We did find a couple of MBA students uh, uh, who we tried to see whether there was something that can happen where they can handle the business side of things and we can handle the tech side of things. But there was some, what, what we found is with deep tech, uh, people who are very far removed from the technology uh, think it can do anything which is, there's nothing further than the truth. Uh, you say speech processing and music processing, they're actually like poles apart. There's so much, this, this, you cannot use the same system. There's so much difference. And somebody who doesn't know that, uh, you know, is in a difficult position to kind of sell because a client will tell you anything. He'll say, He'll say yes, but it might be absolutely something which, you know, Google and Amazon have put 15 years of research into and we can't come up with it overnight. So, those uh, disparities we did find when we tried to look for business people. Uh, so we said, you know, we'll try and do the sales thing ourselves and see how it works out. Uh, and then beyond that point, we found that we wanted more very solid tech folks. So our entire enterprise was not a, it wasn't a business venture. It was more of, we were trying to build a high-tech lab that can make money. That was, I think, what was happening. Uh, so we got two more tech master students who had, uh, one was at the lab, who had very good UI kind of skills. Uh, so we called him back uh, from Bangalore where he had, he had taken a job and he was happy to come because he also lives in Bombay and he wanted to be in Bombay. Um, and another student who was also a core tech person who was in, an, in another lab but also very strong on the signal processing, we called him also in. Uh, and he also was just graduating but he was interested in staying in Bombay. So we had an extremely tech heavy team without any business uh, strength, so to speak. So that was, uh, that could have been a better team. It could have been a more rounded team. 
uh, but we didn't have that luxury of waiting for that person to come along. So we had to move ahead anyway, and we did. Uh, and that's not, I could say it, it has affected us somewhat. Yeah, it has affected us somewhat, but I think at some level, I also think that uh, a trust is an extremely important thing in a founding team. And our founding team has stuck together through seven years. Uh, and that, I think, has a, a, a big role in that is because one of the founders, me, is actually handling sales. Uh, so without having any idea of sales, uh, but being a pure tech guy. But I'm able to kind of convey what's happening completely transparently to everybody. And that helps a lot. I'm not saying that a business guy won't do that. We've had some business consultants also. Uh, but we've seen that every time it's important for one of the real co-founders to be able to handle business operations. If that co-founder happens to be a tech person, too bad, that's his, he has to get it. He has to, he has to do that. Uh, if you're lucky enough at an early stage to get a business co-founder who completely buys into the vision, then great, we didn't have that. So, uh, Right. It's a very, uh, there are a lot of ifs in that statement. So, yeah, probably, uh, short answer, yes, it could have, if, you know, if all the stars aligned. Uh, it No, it could have been possible. That, that, that's definitely, it, it could have been possible with enough time and inclination. Uh, the people we spoke to already had some plans of their own. So it was like they wanted to quickly see if something would work out or not. Uh, and if, you know, it wasn't, uh, like simple questions, what do you do if the client says, I don't want to buy this? Uh, you know, and then they say, oh, no problem, you guys will build something else. And that is completely against what, the way, our comp the way we thought about our company. We had spent so many years doing research in a particular area the entire foundation of the company was to see the research in the lab go out into the industry. It, you know, money making was supposed to be happening along the way, but that was the core foundation of the company, not so much, uh, you know, building a venture of any sort, uh, which is selling anything. It was really to see the research that we had done be used in industry. So that was something we really wanted to push till the extent that we can. Uh, and to, to have somebody say early on that, okay, you know, if that's not happening, then forget it. We do something else. That was not kind of gelling with us. So, but given time and given the kind, right kind of inclination and, you know, uh, time spent with the business guy, I'm sure it could have actually worked out. So, yeah, so we went into sign. Uh, we were wondering kind of what to do. Um, we started building a karaoke website. So at that time, we had study, you know, eyes in the sky kind of thing. And we said, okay, we're going to build a karaoke website, which everybody can come and sing and get a score. And a lot of the in initial feedback from mentors and stuff was, uh, even if you're building a B2B venture, even if your goal is to kind of see your technology out there, if you can build a very large consumer platform where a lot of people are using it, then businesses will buy in later. Uh, so that was the kind of approach that we were advised to take into actually selling to companies rather than directly just going and selling something which is brand new. So that's when we built uh, Gaona, which is, you know, the that one, that was the nice karaoke website. Uh, before that, we did raise, Sign gives us, you know, that, at that time, they were giving us 15 lakhs of uh, soft loan. Uh, we raised 30 lakhs from our friends and family around so that we can pay all our salaries. You know, not having salaries was not an option uh, for any of us on the team. So we all took a nominal amount as salaries, and we said, uh, we raised money from friends and family to pay, us, pay ourselves. So uh, that happened very fast. Uh, we built the website. Uh, then very early on, we realized, so, so somewhere around here, we kind of uh, realized that uh, it was getting some usage and some traction, but the problem was there's a big issue called music copyright, which to this day, hounds, uh, you know, kind of uh, hounds us. Uh, and you need to purchase or license the rights to music, which is also intellectual property, to use it in a particular way. That is uh, a barrier for anybody who's entering the music space uh, in India or worldwide, everywhere in the world. It's more complicated in India than anywhere else. Or 
at least that's what because we've been here for so long, we know how complicated it is. It's monopolized. It's not. There's no. Uh, there's no clear path to licensing. It's not meritocratic. It's all relationship driven. It's all a very weird and murky space. And your entire venture kind of hinges on something which is not really within nowhere close, to, you know, within your control. Uh, so we went to all the major music labels uh, very early on and said, "Listen, we're trying to build something new." Uh, the technology is very cool. Everybody saw the demo. Like, wow, it's really cool. Oh my god, it actually works. Fantastic. Oh, I can sing great. All that great. You know, we'd love to support you as a startup. We said, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, how much uh, can you give us some songs? Oh, no, 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 no. See, that's our core business. How can we give you songs? And okay, how much would you want for the songs? Uh, we only want, you know, we only want 50 songs to start off with or something. No, no, we don't do business. We don't do that sort of business. Uh, take our entire catalog, pay us two crores uh, minimum guarantee per year. Uh, that's the only business we understand. So we don't waste our time doing smaller business. And this was kind of throughout the industry. Um, one guy, after a lot of begging, you know, going in shorts and all, he said uh, that, okay, you know, for you, special rate, 10,000 rupees a song. Uh, but minimum, you have to take 100 songs. Of, uh, 500 songs, sorry. Uh, so still, you know, more money than we had in the bank and willing to put on, a, on something which is not even going to, uh, not going to see us through. So, uh, but, you, but, but then we found some loopholes using very old songs, trying to just do stuff to make the product, leave, keep the product alive so people can see it. Uh, so that happened there. Then we we have so we were extremely lucky also uh, in the sense that we got some fantastic uh, we got some amazing support from Sain and Professor and everybody, and we've got some fantastic angels uh, on board who pretty much said that listen, uh, you guys are building technology. Technology looks very cool. You got US pat you know patents. You look like you're building more technology. Um, you don't know anything about business. But uh, that's fine. You'll figure it out as you go along, and we are kind of there, silent, to support you on your, you know, on your ups and downs. Mainly in your downs, we're there, so don't, uh, you know, this thing. But uh, it was it was extremely good support. So we got this uh, small round of just some seed angel kind of funding uh, from a group called the Indian Angel Network. Uh, the lead investor in that uh, in that round was Rajan Anandan. He's the MD of Google Asia. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ha, huh, so I'm saying so this don't don't so this is a presentation for what not to do. Okay? <laughs> so so yeah, that's absolutely right. Yes. How do you know God exists? You just believe, right? You have faith in something. There's really no answer to that. So I'll give you, I'll tell you where this thing started from, at a very, in a nutshell. Sure. So, so I'll tell you. So, so I, I sing like uh, you know, uh, light music and all that, uh, parties and stuff, uh, side by side with the. At that time, IIT had a PhD stipend of eight thousand rupees uh, a month. So nothing you're going to run your house on. So there was some singing I used to do on the side, try to make some money and all that. Uh, and I know when I used to learn to sing, it was a very, especially I'm not a trained singer or anything, light singer. So very complicated to learn singing properly if you don't have the time to go to a proper teacher and spend years and years and years. It actually takes to hone that talent, right? Um, so, and I had this music kind of background. Professor Pitira wanted to get into music signal processing because there was a lot of work in speech, but music was, some stuff was there, but it was interesting to have an actual PhD student working on music problem. Uh, so we said the core was of the thought was if I can find out how the original singer from an original song actually sang that song and get a detailed kind of visual representation, I don't even need to go to a teacher, right? Because the system will tell me, okay, you are learning this song, the original singer sang it like this, and you know it'll break it down for me and it'll explain to me what the way I'm supposed to sing it, so you can learn that. So that was the thought process, and I thought okay, if, if it's built for me and everybody, if and I want to learn singing, this will be useful for anybody else who wants to learn singing. So, in a nutshell, that was it. And then we obviously built the system out, and uh, I wanted to use it. But that was basically it. <laughs> At the end of the day, if I got to use it, and it was working for me, I'd be very happy. Uh, but then the thought was, okay, other people can use it. And then we were thinking about all these things of auditions, and how different ways that it could make money 
uh, you know, uh, so it's just a personal kind of a thing. There was no market research or any serious kind of thought process, which is very wrong. Don't do it like that. <laughs> okay, no, absolutely wrong. The way I did it is very wrong. So what you're being taught now is do the market research, right? If you thought of an idea, find out who, where the market is, and that by, by, by where the market is means two or three things. Where in the world is the market? Is the market India? Is the market Southeast Asia? Is the market America, Latin America? Where, where is the market for your product? Where are the maximum number of people willing to pay the maximum, maximum buck? That's the most single overriding question. And that's the question you have to answer before anything else. Uh, and you have to do a lot of research and understanding and talk to people to get an answer to that question. And that question, if you get right initially, you are in a much better position than trying to figure it out along the way. So that is the absolutely right way to go about a venture. And that is how we are actually now doing things. Uh, when we have some thought process and all that, it's still, the market research is still not very intensive. But because we've got connections and we're talking to people who are in the industry already, their opinions can be more respected than you know, uh, somebody who is a, uh, a relative or a stakeholder who's, or you know, somebody who's invested in you already and saying, oh, this is very cool and this is definitely usable and yes, there's a market. Somebody who's actually going to pay money for it, um, their input is far more important. So that is uh, definitely the right way to do it. You know, figure out the market first and then the thing with this is that when you're in deep technology, you know, in signal processing, which takes like five years to do a PhD, build something, uh, file a patent, that entire process is so long. And once you're in the field, there's no time, right? If the customer says, if you, if you, if you have a cool tech idea and the market is, is ready uh, there and you know, there's a good fit and all that has all been figured out and now you have to go live with the product and you don't have the technology, you only have one option. You don't have the option of building it yourself. But that's going to take time, right? Uh, so you have to go to somebody who already has it. So, and license it from them, which you will find that is, a very, is, is complicated uh, and you don't have full control, especially if your product is very, very core tech. So that was something which we wanted to be a tech company, which is actually uh, using our own technology. So that was what kind of, you know, we said we, put, we do the technology first, which was happening anyway as part of the PhD, and we tried to commercialize that. So from a pure entrepreneurship standpoint, it's, it's reverse entrepreneurship. So, so don't do it. Uh, so yeah, so I hope that answers your question somewhat. Um, Right, so we got this funding, we got our first US patent granted. Uh, around this time, one of our clients said, uh, you know, mobile, one of the potential clients said mobile, at this time we're still not making any money. Oh, I okay, there's uh, revenues on there. We're not making any money at this time. But we had a lot of interest in the product from different people. Um, they said mobile is the future. You know, if you had a mobile app, then this would be really, this is something we would use or we would, you know, buy or whatever, something we'd kind of push it out in the market, be a distribution partner. A uh, couple of music labels told us that. So we actually went ahead and used this money to invest in building a mobile application, although we didn't have any in-house uh, mobile application development expertise. Um, we gave it to a company outside. They built an app for us. We got it back. App was horrible, buggy, dying, terrible experience. They overcharged us. Yeah, yeah, that time, they, they, were, they were, but they were developers, but the thing is, there's no way of actually validating, you know, who's good, who's bad. It's, it's, it's very tough, uh, especially for newbies to kind of figure it out, especially in mobile development. It's a new thing completely. Mobile apps aren't as big as they are now, you know, so there's an app for everything. So uh, the app we got was terrible. Uh, and that's where the founding team kind of took over. And uh, the core tech team, which is not me, other three guys, uh, they said, listen, this is terrible. We can't go to the market with this app. This is, we, want, we, don't, we don't want to use this app. It's just a bad application. Uh, so they just learned Android and iOS overnight, logged it out, and over four months we built our own app, which went out as Gaona. Uh, by that time, I had made enough rounds of the music labels, so if one of them felt pity and said, Ki, ye, you know, ye, take this 150 songs, you know, please don't come back <laughs> until you know you're making money or something like that. Don't use these 150 songs overseas, please just use it in India, because otherwise my overseas principles will. Uh, will you know, will have my throat. Uh, so just like a gesture of good faith, uh, this thing. Problem was the songs weren't great. Nobody's gonna sing those songs. There were some old songs and this thing. So we still didn't have like great songs on our platform. But we built this. It got 
great traction actually around this this product got very interesting traction around here which was very weird we just left it over there we didn't spend too much money trying to market it or anything suddenly over over here just in 2 3 months it has got some 100000 downloads when data became a little cheaper and people started using and all that and uh, but by that time we figured that listen we want to we need to make money now bahut ho gaya uh, at this point of time one of the music labels said listen your tech is very nice and all that and we are building our own product for antakshari which is the game that will work in india karaoke okay, nobody knows in india antakshari will work and we are investing a huge amount of money in this product uh, can we use your technology inside our antakshari product and uh, we asked them will you pay us he said yeah of course we pay you and then we said how much do you pay us you pay a good amount of money like uh, so it was a it was like a 75 lakh contract over one and a half years uh, for doing a licensing technology into their product so we said great man this you know this is and then the thing is once you get paid by somebody then you want to just continue getting paid you can't uh, you 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 then 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 you can't go back and say okay i'll build a b2c application a lot of people will use it at some point i'll figure out a monetization uh, button and all that stuff doesn't work anymore so that's when we closed this contract it was actually a big deal for us uh, with the music label uh, and then we said okay this is then this is our model we are going to we built the product in such a way that it can be packaged and plugged into other uh, applications so now we will take this product and we will license it to people who want to build their own applications and we'll figure out the actual business model could be we charge them for a year for the license uh, we do uh, a lot of clients said do revenue share with us because we are going to make money of this product we are going to make 5 crores over the next 2 years um so you know we'll give you 25% of that so that's great money 1.25 crores or whatever that is so you know it's good money for you so and we're a big company we know how to execute business and all that so if you ever get if you ever get faced with all those things in case you're doing a technology licensing business don't fall for it uh just say no it doesn't work for us uh give us cash uh that's all that we know uh, and figure out a way to you kind know, of get the money out of the companies don't rely on any kind of uh partnership mode at a early stage you're too small they're too big and it's impossible for you to audit them okay that's the practical reality of things so we did one licensing deal over here with the largest music one of the largest music labels in india we did an other licensing deal for an international deployment across 13 countries in africa uh, again for a karaoke contest with akon singing and you get to win a prize to cut an album with him um, so both very very on contract on paper very big deals uh, you know money wise we managed to get some advances also some small advances also paid from both clients uh, so there was some money also that came in initially uh so this is when we kind of got our first paycheck uh in 2014 uh then two things happened one was uh the management of this company this product was built the management of this company changed uh the product itself was shelved it never went live uh and although we had things in our contract which protected us and said that you know you have to pay us so that's part two part two agreements don't mean anything in india uh you know only business means something Uh, so you are, you have to just get cash out of people uh, and don't spend your time on agreements whether they are investor agreements or they are customer agreements uh, there are very there are you can just get some boiler plate kind of templates available on the net and if anybody wants a basic customer agreement for technology licensing i'm happy to provide you with a template which we worked for a long time to figure it out um, and you cannot you can just give it a reading over two nights and just don't spend time over it uh, and because at the end of the day when you go and show the agreement to the client because they're not paying you they are like well okay you know do what you want to do uh, and you can't do anything so uh, people were so that all that stuff we learned the hard way that was lesson number 1 over here the second client what happened was they decided not to pay us uh, for whatever reason they had so it was uh, it was a, that this was a pure revenue share kind of deal with some small advance uh, and you know we were supposed to get a large amount of money if the product did well what they said is the product did very badly um that's what they told us and uh, then they issued press releases saying uh, you know there have been 7 million unit minutes of usage on the product in africa so we took the own press release and said you're saying it's doing badly but you're saying but your press release is saying it's doing well you know what is the reality of it uh, and the, po- the problem was it was a telco uh, like a, a mobile phone company sister concern or whatever and so the technology was not within our control it was installed within the data center of a telco to actually uh, be deployed 
So we couldn't, that's a closed ecosystem. From outside you can't get access and see what's the usage. Uh, so that is point number two. Uh, that if you can't control your technology, don't do the business. Uh, if, and I'm talking, whatever I'm going to say is, is pure from a technology licensing standpoint, because that's the business we've built. I don't understand all the other kind of businesses that are there in the market to talk about them intelligently. So they basically told us it's not working. Uh, we, yeah, go ahead. Yes, there was a lot written that they will give us a monthly MIS and give us uh, tracking, of tracking of how many countries, every server in every country with usage. Uh, no, they just didn't do it. We begged and begged and we tried different ways and we tried to put muscle through our investor at the top level and everything. We tried everything in the book and ultimately uh, we didn't get the info. Uh, so interestingly, the, the, the story was that we, um, uh, so okay, the, la the final, the way it closed, the chapter closed was, they didn't even, did, they, uh, we went, basically camped at their office and said, we're not leaving here until you tell us what's the usage. Uh, and the guy comes in, and this is one of the head honchos, he comes in after like 15 minutes in his office because he's tired of seeing you sitting there in front of, in his waiting room. And uh, he comes out with an Excel spreadsheet which says, which, which he just made, okay, he made it in 15 minutes. It said 13 countries, usage in each country is 0.1% or something like that. Uh, Nigeria, some 99 percent total amount due to Sensible, thousand uh, dollars, and then he said, "Take it or leave it." Thousand uh, dollars, sixty thousand rupees. So uh, we said, "This is just ridiculous." You know, what can we do now? And we had spent so much time and effort behind this uh, entire thing. At that point, we said, "Okay, nothing's going to come out of this." We asked our investors, "What should we do?" So they said, "What are you going to do?" Uh, you know, you're not in a position to do anything, but I hope you've learned a valuable lesson. I said, yeah, I learned a valuable lesson, but what about the venture? <laughs> so, so, uh, and the investors, as I said, we had a great group of angels. So they said, I'm glad, we, we're glad you learned this now. Uh, you know, so what's the lesson you've learned? They said, don't do revenue share deals with big companies. I said, good, what will you do now in the future? You will charge them advance, you have a software license, you will charge them 100% advance, or you don't do business. So, so once they, once we said that and all that, then, uh, but, so we still had some sales. It's not like we didn't do anything, you know. So we had some sales. Uh, it was decent amount of money to keep us kind of going. It wasn't absolute pits and all that. The, all these we spent a huge amount of effort in trying to recover the big money. But so we started doing things on the side, um, which were uh, services using our technology, uh, which were things like subtitling for music videos. Which people, when people want to put their videos up on YouTube and they want subtitles, we had a relatively faster subtitling system. Um, we had a system which, uh, uh, so radio channels want to uh, conduct research to identify what to put on the radio channel next, what's the most popular song. So they have a system of conducting research, they take a room, they play back 10, 10 seconds or 15, 20 seconds of 100 different songs and people will write down, okay, I like this one, I don't like this one, and they collect that and they do research. But now they're cutting those songs and finding the main part of the song, or something we also had some technology which made that easier. So we provided some services on the side, found out ways to extract money from clients to keep us going and look like we're making money. Well, not in the core business that we want to build, but at least some money. So then using that, our investors said, okay, this is not a bad, it's not bad. Uh, it's not great, but it's not bad and you've learned some lessons. And so let's give you a bridge round to help you out, which is what we raised in March 2015. And that kind of, since then we haven't raised funding. Uh, we haven't needed to uh, raise funding for this business. Uh, and also we've, but now we're trying to build, we're trying to see whether we can raise funding for a much larger business, uh, which is uh, in the platform space, not so much in the technology licensing space exactly, but using our core tech obviously. So that happened over here. And since then it's been quite, it's been pretty decent. We, we did some business in Vietnam. Uh, you know, we did a television network karaoke, we did a karaoke for Pepsi, we did a brand campaign for them through another partner. Uh, we did a karaoke with uh, a telco again in Vietnam. Um, this one we agreed to a revenue share, but that's because the, the partner agreed to pay us a large amount of money to do exclusivity in Vietnam. So he says, you don't go and do business with anybody else in Vietnam. We're like, fine, we're not going to go. We weren't, they found us. We just got damn lucky. On our website we have, I think we're very lucky. And we're non-entrepreneurial. So, <laughs> so uh, people found us through our website. Uh, and ultimately the product is very unique. People haven't built this the way we have, and we've and we're constantly pushing the envelope on what is possible. Uh, you know, as far as the core experience of singing on a mobile interface is concerned. So we still have a product which is streets ahead of what other people uh, have in the market. 
So um, we just didn't have the marketing know-how, ability, whatever, uh, to you know, kind of market it to the right kind of people. People found us, and we were able to execute once they found us. So that is, uh, you know, uh, that kind of helped. So that Vietnam thing, one, we pulled off one, we pulled off three. So you know, that, that helped. At that time, we had a business uh, consultant with us also. So that guy was also able to kind of convert uh, into you know, in, uh, a little faster than what we would have done without him. So that, that sort of helped. Uh, then we, we, we signed up with a few more partners. So now we're live in about seven countries, I think, uh, with different karaoke products, still early days. Uh, but the deals are fairly you know, well-structured. Uh, last thing uh, I'll say, two things I'll just say last. Uh, we got a second US patent over here, again, Professor Rao was very instrumental in kind of pushing us for the second patent. So we got that, now we're trying to write the third US patent down. This, these patents are actually helping us because now we know that we have to do business in the US. Uh, and that's where, so now, uh, so what you're learning now, that first rule of knowing where your market is and fit and all that, it took us this to figure this out. That now we have to go to the US and that's where our market product, market fit is going to, it's still not there, we haven't got traction with multiple US clients and all. But whatever we've learned so far, and speaking to all the people in the industry, that is not, it's primary research, not secondary research. It's primary research is telling us that that is where this product is actually going to see the light of day and become something big, if at all. So, one. So in India, the music copyright thing is such a big, we've spoken to so many people. Uh, largest telcos, largest media companies, television channels, you, we've gone to everybody the largest music streaming companies, they all know who we are and what we do. Uh, and uh, the music copyright issue is so complicated. Uh, although some new copyright act has been passed recently, it's still not enforced. So the music streaming, the, the, the number of shutdowns in the music streaming space are higher than anywhere else. And, then, and the, few, the fewest number of companies even been, tried to do something over there. Because it's... Right. Right. They producing the song is no problem, and going into the market is no problem, uh, and they are doing a hardware-based distribution business. For hardware-based distribution business, is still little. It's, the market is very small still for that, and the licensing part is hardware-driven, which is fixed number of units, so much per unit. On the digital space, which is the more streaming space, is the, the they are. It's it's a lose lose situation, because they tell you. Uh, Either they ask for a lot of money upfront, and if you are fortunate enough to find people to give you that money and give it to them, and then if you then if you fail, that money is gone, because that amount of capital has gone away from your business growth. And if you succeed despite that, then they ask for more money, because there's nothing controlling them. You know, because even if you say okay, contract says that you will not increase your fees by more than five percent per year, they'll say no, no, you are doing so well. Now you must be paying. Now you have to pay us double. So it's like. Only some companies with really, really strong connections, the number, the number of streaming companies you can count on your fingertips, who are actually doing something here. Two yeah, are, the, are the biggest. Right. Right. Would they be aware the correct time? So we try. No, no, absolutely, absolutely right. So we tried that also uh, with uh, Yashraj. Uh, they said, uh, don't touch our music. Uh, you know, Matlab, don't even think about it. Uh, we have, we have our own channels of promoting our music. We don't want to do anything around uh, uh, the singing space and all that. It was a funny conversations. Sometimes you don't uh, you, have to, you have to find a champion who can who believes and takes your product within the company and says, "Ye kuch ho sakta hai." You know that's a critical thing. And we have not in some some of the cases where we thought this could work, this could work. We'll use YouTube as a streaming source. That way, you know, no copyright, nothing. There are other challenges over there. So it's all uh, it's 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 it's, it's the, the the basic thing was. We were trying to solve a problem which was a non-technical one, which was really bugging us. We were like, Are, what is this stupid problem that has got us bogged down so badly uh, that we're not able to launch our super tech product in the market, right? So th that was uh, this thing. And you see that there are so many karaoke apps that have, sorry, just two minutes, there's so many karaoke apps that have been launched and they all shut down ultimately because of this problem. There's only one called Smule Sing Karaoke, which is a US based company, raised $60 million in funding in the US, built a big uh, balance sheet in the US and now is coming to Asia to scale because they've picked out with their clients over there. Yes, and so that's they have thrown huge amounts of money at the at the labels. Sorry. So 
so youtube has its own licenses for cover creation and and so you know how youtube works uh, so the way youtube works is they have uh, a content licensing technology in the background and every company has its own policies on what content can be uh, created and what content can't uh, so and what content can be uh, allowed to be played back and what can't so going that route is interesting but at the at some point of time if the company whose under whose ip it is decides to say no we don't want to display this content youtube will just switch it off so the covers that are available are typically produced by the parent companies for few songs which they want to promote very tightly within youtube uh, so in fact we went to them and we said listen we can increase the number of youtube views also for you imagine if okay i'll show you something quickly oh right right we, so so you're, you're absolutely right we could indie indie artists uh, you know go after them independently and say listen can we launch these campaigns and uh, do uh, music you know and then create people users your fans will create versions of the songs and that's a way to interact with them uh, but uh, so by this time we started getting money and we started liking that and uh, the, these guys don't have money uh, all the independent artists and all they're still trying to make it big uh so if you they don't uh, it's a very fragmented industry people are, a lot of people are trying to make it big a lot of people don't have a large enough fan base when they start off uh and more importantly they don't have any wallet they don't have any uh, they, you can create a platform where this can happen but where is the business? we don't know where the business model is so we are happy to license our technology to a company that will do this independently and if you're starting one i license to you i'm happy to do that for money and you can build that out uh, because it's definitely a use case it's not that it's not a use case it's just that we couldn't see the business model and when we were very clearly at that time we st we stopped trying to figure out ways to get around licensing and we started just licensing our technology and charging money for it so then we stopped looking at kind of alternates to building a b2c product last thing that happened was we did one product in the music learning space which is what is very exciting ultimately and that is a way there is a kind of a way around licensing uh, which was done for a client uh, which is uh, this one over here yeah so there's a, one of one of the largest music institutes in 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 India actually called the True School of Music. It's in Lower Parel. Uh, teaches music professionally. It's a complete university for music only, privately run, venture funded. Uh, they were very interested in the tech and said, "Listen, we want to build a D2C play which allows everybody to learn singing uh, from scratch using an app with our curriculum, which we will create digital curriculum." And they had a lot of expertise in this area of the actual curriculum creation. uh and they came to us and we built the entire so this is the one case where we went out of our way because we thought this is something which could uh no no so they use popular songs there is something in copyright there is something in copyright which allows you a way around if you are an educational institution uh and you are not allowing users to share the recordings on social there are some caveats but there is a slight way around it and the founder has very good ties with the industry so he got sony and universal and all to say ki bhai use no we won't do anything you know and if you do make some money do share please so uh so that was that was that product and i'll just quickly show you a, a video of that one it was called learn to sing it's available on android and ios it's doing very well we're launching a new version in a couple of weeks time uh yes the app is free
Now they're going to start charging in the second version for access to specific kinds of curriculum. So you get to pick a song you like in English and Hindi. Uh, there are videos created that help you that give, uh, explain different concepts to you. This is our interface where you sing and you get a rating. Uh, you learn by singing after the teacher. The teacher sings first, you sing after. And then once you're finished learning the song, you can submit it for rating to an actual teacher uh, at the back end for a price, uh, for a price point. And you get certificates which are generated by them. So that's ultimately where we are going now, uh, which is we're trying to build out a music education platform which uh, could, uh, which, which we're trying to sell in the, in the United States. So, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, we had multiple opportunities where we did actually. So, for example, there's a venture fund called Matrix Venture Partners. Uh, at that, in about 2013, 14, around that time, uh, there was a very successful app in China called Changba, which was a music karaoke app, uh, doing extremely well, number one on the iTunes Play Store, making money, everything. And they kind of found us because we had our Gaona app on the Play Store, and they said, "Do you guys want to become the Changba of India?" We said, "Yes, we want to become the Changba of India." Uh, but we don't understand music licensing. Please, can you help us with that in India? I said, of course, we are Matrix Venture Partners, huge, you know, along with Sequoia, big venture fund. We have experts in this domain, and we'll figure it out for you. I said, sir, thank you. Called the head honcho of the largest uh, TV channel for uh, music, uh, TV, music TV channel, uh, multiple, multiple music TV channels, actually. And uh, the guy sat across the table and said, yeah, it's a solvable problem. You throw money, and you'll you get your licenses, you know, and I, I license video content from the labels. So, you know, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the thing is, okay, a little bit about licensing since we're talking about it. Music streaming is a straightforward license. You have a recording, the recording is owned by the label. Uh, the label, you pay them money and you can use the recording. Okay, broadly the licensing area. The stuff that we are doing, little more involved. Uh, you're showing the lyrics, separate license for that. You're showing the lyrics synchronized with the audio. It's a synchronization license. Uh, you are showing the melody, uh, composition license. Uh, you are recording the user's voice, mixing it with the actual audio and publishing that as a publishing license. All these typically are not part of the streaming or the recording license. These are incremental licenses. Uh, yeah, but, but the, yeah. yeah, streaming is a one way this thing. This is a lot more interactive. Uh, and these licenses reside with not necessarily the labels. In fact, in India, people don't even, they've lost track of who these licenses reside with for a certain uh, group of songs, so like different genres and ages of, of songs. So some of them reside with the composers, lyricists, publishing groups, Sony's music license is not with Sony, it's with some Warner publishing, the publishing rights for that song. It's, it's, a, it's a fragmented crazy space. So this gentleman said, we'll do it, we'll figure it out, great, great, everything. Came back and said, can't be done, I'm not able to figure it out. Uh, it could have been a ruse because then next day he came to us and said, listen, I want to license the technology, I want to build this product. So maybe he told those guys that listen this thing, he, but he found it to be very big. So he came back and said, okay, and we said, great, we hammered out with him. We said, we'll do the entire development, everything. Had a contract, had a handshake with him uh, for a, not a very big amount, a small, relatively small amount, but we said, we, he said, he'll get it organized. He said, next week I'm gonna meet the labels and figure this out, and then, uh, you know, week two, we will start development and work. And we never heard back. Uh, and then pick up our calls, and we had, Professor Peter also came to his office and met him and all that. 
so everything is very like very very cool until this licensing is a little messed up here over here in music copyright is a, is a bit it's Right, right. So, and if they see there is a sharing or whatever is that, is that not an option? Mm, no, so, so revenue share was already always proposed, uh, you know, and this, when we have this, but they, were, they, they work under the MG this thing rule. So, the only thing we did not give them because we were a little scared was equity in our company. That could have been a mistake. Maybe that because how Spotify has become Spotify is what from what little bit I understand about their business is that very early on they gave the two largest. Uh, licensing agencies equity in Spotify and then they became Spotify uh, but I don't know for some reason we were very wary of giving equity in our company to these guys after interacting with them not very straightforward interactions and then sometimes you hear uh, yeah, go ahead. well I actually I don't I, my guess is that's that is a problem uh, so of course, now because they've IPO'd, see, Smule has figured it out. They're in India, and they're a karaoke product. Sorry, Apple Music is there. Google is Google is somewhat there, uh, you know. So, uh, but but Spotify is opening operations here next uh, month or two months. Yeah, they've already hired a head of operations, business head of operations. They have an office with 150 people. Uh, so, part of their IPO plans when they this, this came to light when they published their plans for the future when they were doing the IPO listing. And that India was a big part of their plans. And uh, Amazon Prime is here now, so we actually spoke to the head of Amazon Prime Music, and he was when he was doing the licensing, and he was like, "Oh, I have a different set of problems. It's not that I don't have the money. The problem is when I say I'm Amazon, then people multiply the money they want into ten. <laughs> so then it takes a huge amount. It still takes them also time to kind of license at a at a at a reasonable rate. Uh, so uh, I'm not saying it can't be done. There are definitely some ways to do it. You know, maybe I." Uh, I don't know. I could have uh, married the daughter of the founder of the largest label, or something. You know. <laughs> so there are. I'm not saying an entrepreneur finds any way to solve a problem, right? So, so I'm. I'm saying there must be. There, there are some. Pro there are some ways for sure, and there are people doing it. I'm just saying we couldn't do it. And then after, at a beyond the point, we gave. We said, fine. We're happy licensing our technology. Our technology is still the, is still a, ahead of the curve, and we're getting paid for it. Let's just find the right market to license in. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yes, yes. The first question is students today when they come to us, they are quite daunted. Hmm. They know what to do and at a high level they understand. Yeah, 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 it's amazing. There is a problem, so it's an interesting problem. Yes. And you try to convert that into a problem, a product market fit uh, yes. kind of thing. And then you try to create a product that can really fit. Yes. Now, when they really face a problem, when they interact with their business, what are the first Right. You are still fighting your patent patches. And there are like 20 other things happening around you. And you are the 24 hours a day. Yes. So, how do you spend? Because I personally have the time as the only resource that we wanted. Yes. Yes. So, my request to you is if you can enlighten us, what was the magic, uh, you can say, you know, the magic uh, numbers that you uh, could share your life that uh, helped you? So yeah, so don't go. My numbers are very wrong. You don't go. Don't, don't go by my numbers. I can. I can. But I can tell you what are the numbers you should be spending in that stage. 20, 23 hours of your day should be spent on selling your product to a client and getting that paycheck out of him uh, for a model which can be repeated, which can show repeated sales to multiple clients. Spend all your time selling to a client. So I was so happy to hear that two guys said that we have clients. So I, I want. As soon as you say you have clients, I want to deep dive and say, can I con is there a contract? Is there a paycheck? Is there an advance? I'm because I know, I know because we, we've gone through that. So I want like to be, I want you guys to be wary because this, you know, what is a what is a client intent to pay doesn't mean jack. Uh, so uh, spend all your time pitching your product, even if you have it or don't have it, pitching it to a client, telling him it will be there in two months, uh, but I need an advance paycheck now. Uh, so spend all your time finding the clients who will do this. Uh, and as you talk to the clients, you become wiser and wiser and wiser. Nine out of ten will say no. Tenth one will say yes because that pitch to them is 
much more well thought out because you have the reasons why other clients have said no uh, and you can you know that that much they are willing to share why you are saying why are we saying no and all that. So uh, but go and just sell, um, do not spend your time doing anything else uh, uh, and, and obviously, obviously do not sell to a client which is a one off sale. So that again was that mistake with that first technology licensing this thing, too specific one music label out of five wants to build a particular kind of product for their music content and license ok good it was a license deal good but do not take that to an investor and say I am now going to sell to all the music labels in the world right because that is wrong you are not going to. So that common sense at least have that ok if I am selling to one customer I have 100 more customers who can buy something similar with the ability to buy something similar uh, that is I mean that I, I would think that is the that is the best way to go about things and every, once you do that no everything else falls into place once your paychecks are coming in and you have the ability to show that everything else lines up your lawyers will line up your accountants will do their work properly everything will will, will just do not worry about all the other stuff this is the most important thing. Uh, I think I have been only talking about that one challenge which is trying to identify product market fit. Yeah, yeah. The challenge is when they are working inside the campus, huh. students, I mean they have students, friends, they have yes, class, yes. They have, uh, faculty, yes. it's all fine and we all know each other. But what is happening today is now, now we are actually expecting them to go out and do the same and then they need very interesting tech jobs, very different Yes. A lot of industry people talk yes. about What, what what the question is how do you form a right team when you are going out to talk to people? Right. That's a very good question. There are no thumb rules, but it's a very good question, and I can give you a couple of again what not to do. Uh, No, no, don't get fooled by all that. I mean, that was all, all bullshit. The, the, going to a five star and meeting people and saying, "Oh, we're going to meet here," and that's how great I am, and that's how much money I have, and all that's just all nonsense. Uh, so don't get taken in by all that stuff. Uh, this label also, uh, they used to try to make us meet famous singers in their office and say, "Look, look, I'm going to make you meet him," and all that. And you're a singer. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm not going to hide that. But that's, uh, but what does that have to do with the business? You know, that more important is you pay me the money. So, uh, uh, so a couple of things there. Uh, um, okay, so business incubators like Sign and all have a good network. They have a fabulous network of people who have they know because they've been around for so long. They know who the good people are, the people who want you know loot you or you know try to take you for a ride, and so they know the good folks. And the people that Sign themselves, I mean, I'm talking from whatever I understand. People that Sign themselves have seen so many people. They can also spot a fraud kind of thing very fast. You might just be taken in because we are young and we are, you know we want to. Uh, everything sounds great and hunky dory, but take advice. Get a get a professor on board, you know, who can <laughs> who's much more experienced than what you are and dealt with much more people. Uh, get an advisory board is what I'm trying to say. Basically, get a, a group of people who are within your ecosystem, uh, fairly mature, have enough grey hair, uh, you know, uh, grey or white or none at all, whatever, uh, whichever whatever works for you, and uh, uh, you know, get them to and they and and you know and those people you know you can trust right and then always include them in those high level discussions. So, if an advisor is saying that listen I am going to uh, I am going to you know be a great advisor for you you know and I am going to I have done so much business I am great I am this and that or whatever I have been we have been taken in also by people. Uh, uh, so, uh, the, the thing is one thing so one thing apart from that is uh, never give away something for nothing. So, uh, despite what people tell you and they say listen I want We've had a conversation. Yeah, I want I want two percent equity to introduce you to Sonu Nigam. What mad what? <laughs> so you know, so I want I'll give give me two percent equity over two years. You know, and I close some deals for you. Uh, you know, large deals for you. Sounded very good on on paper. Mistake that we made is we and we like the guy spoke a lot. He was everything that we are not. Knew how to bullshit his way through anything. You know, so uh, but the problem was we didn't say okay. You will you should have put a number. You will get your equity when you generate. Hundred thousand dollars of revenue minimum for us, uh, and not that is not a contract. That is money in the bank, uh, you know. So things like that, uh, yeah. So always tie in 
things you're giving away for you know, for a tangible cash is the most tangible thing in the world. Tie it into cash, right? And if you don't give us hundred thousand, if you don't have, if you're not generated it, we'll still give you our equity. You pay us hundred thousand dollars, right? So, matlab, just make it very tight. Those are the things we have kind of learned. So, uh, I don't know if that helps answer. Yeah. Six months. Six months. Can't look beyond that whole thing. <laughs> No, good question. We've never set we never set targets, so that's actually a mistake. So now we started financial. We're doing a little bit in the business plan creation. We're trying to do a little bit of business projection, uh, and saying, okay, this a real business projection, not just something to show an investor, like something which I can also we can also believe that yes, this we can do this if such and such criteria is met. So the most important thing is uh, figuring out how many customers you can convert at what price point within what timeline with what resources. Yes. Sure, sure. So, so what we've understood is, music education is a market where people pay money uh, for learning. Uh, that's an area where the technology should evolve. Alongside that, a lot of uh, what we're seeing the trend-wise in the voice space is that more than mobile phones, a lot of smart speakers, Alexa, Google Home is coming along. So somewhere there is a tie-in between that. If the big giants are pushing that down our throats. I'm going to ask you about that. Yes, so definitely there is a touch point between those two. Yes, our tech and that somewhere there is a touch point. I, there's something interesting that could happen in that space, which is what drives the technology thought process. Uh, the business is, uh, but more important than that is the business. So a closing certain amount of revenue by a certain amount by a certain date. Uh, you know, and trying to understand now as much as because based on our experiences, trying to understand where all we can go wrong, you know, get the first two clients as fast as possible, uh, you know, in, in within the kind of structure we want, from the kind of market we want, uh, solve that really fast, and then that is basically what we're kind of focusing on at the moment. At the moment, what is happening right now? The SDK license, existing contracts, all that, like you know, uh, getting back uh, payments from clients, that is going to continue. Uh, but we see that we don't want to go down that road. Uh, as our only business, we need to build something bigger, which we think we have the technology for. So, nah, sorry, I, I, I missed I missed one question over here. You had a somebody here had a question, and I took multiple questions from one person. Sorry, you, you forgot your question. Sorry, yeah, yeah. But you can always reach out offline if you if it's if it's that important. <laughs> you feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm. Sure. Yes. So I think that is certainly That's the future. That that I mean everybody knows, yeah. No, there is a lot so the applications of voice technology, there are I, I think we picked the one that is the smallest and the most painful. You know, so uh, there are much more deep tech uh, voice applications. There are voice biometric is a big one. There's an IT Chennai. Yeah, yeah. There's an IT Chennai company. Right, right. They're they're doing phenomenal work, uh, doing uh, voice biometric. Again, not. Yes, yes. So you know, even that company you told me about that uh, Easy Voice, which has already got SBI. I mean, amazing, right? That is just uh, there's immense potential. The only, I think, the only thing that's holding us back from doing those kind of approaches. Is we want to still we for us the technology ownership is much more important. It still it still is overriding. So we wanted to be tech, we want to be a company that's building technology which is our own used in this thing. Not so much an, a company which is licensing a technology from outside in the voice space to build a business. That is still a maybe a roadblock mentally which we can which at some time you know we we would try to come out of. But that's before not before we have tried to exploit. With the market we think that there is for the tech that we have. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> that's a damn good question. It's a, it's a, it's a painful, painful process. Uh, in fact, Professor Rao actually gave us the way to do it. Uh, so hiring, so there are two ways. One is you hire freshers and you groom them uh, so that they become important parts of your company. Um, unless you've raised a massive amount of money and you're able to pay an Android developer 20 lakhs a year, uh, you know, you cannot hold on to them. So uh, the fresher will leave in two years. Uh, if, uh, if you're really lucky, they'll stay for more, one more year bonus. Uh, somebody who's really loyal and who believes in you and you know, the, the equation is right will stay on for longer, of course, but that you can't guarantee, you can't bet on. Keep getting more and more freshers in every year. Uh, they come in cheap, uh, you know, get them in, hone, and hone, just go on building redundancy for uh, an existing team and just, uh, so that is one part of the hiring process, which is something we've started uh, doing as a second nature, we have something we have to do. Uh, second part is obviously, so a lot of people, a lot of really good hirers are able to poach people from other companies. Uh, so the really good entrepreneurs, you know, are able to kind of go onto LinkedIn and say, I want this guy. And basically there's a big story you now of uh, Facebook, Google, somebody, uh, Steve Jobs, I don't know who, somebody going to somebody uh, who's the head of Pepsi and saying, do you want to be selling sugared water for the rest of your life? Yeah, yeah, I don't even know that story. And, you know, and just like imagine making a pitch like that at the top and saying, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, come and do something with me. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. So basically a really good entrepreneur or a really good guy will be able to kind of convince the other person that what they're doing in their current job, no matter how much money they're getting paid, is actually shitty. And they are absolutely wasting your life in this company. Please come and join mine where there's much better future for you. Right? And that is the second way which we haven't successfully done. Uh, we haven't gone that route, but people are very successful at at, uh, at doing that. We've had people post from our company uh, by that. So that is also an important uh, thing, a skill to have, I guess, when you're uh, building. Great. I think we need to stop here. I think just to I think close, I think that's I think what Vishu has done. Bring the point that we are talking about price for the last four months on the BNC. What is that heart of that? So you can start with whatever you can start with. You can start with technology, you can start with marketing, whatever you start with. But you have to beat on the value proposition. Like who are the most important people who would require this no matter what? And how you can then make them happen for them. So therefore I think in your last class, obviously, I use all of you to bring out very strong the value proposition and how you are going to for it. So with that I think give me thanks to Nishri and Dr. Thank you. So I think that will be great learning for all of us and hopefully we will do something with these inputs. Thanks, Nisha. Thank you. Yeah.